Hello everyone, uh, my name is Andrew Friskup and I'm the Serial Extension Plant Pathologist at North Dakota State University. Today we're going to be taking a tour of the NDSU Extension Pest Management app that was recently launched, launched in 2014. Uh, before I begin, uh, I would like to tell you what the app exactly is and what is the main goal of it. Uh, the pest management app is a uh, resource medium that combines three NDSU extension publications, namely the plant disease management guide, the insecticide guide, and the weed control guide. Um, combining these three resources into one uh, mobile app, it was uh, really instilled by the commodity group base and hence uh, commodity group support has, uh, was a strong indication of why this app became a success. Uh, so to start things off, uh, you need to know, know how to download the app. Uh, there are two platforms you can download it on. Uh, for the Apple-based uh, devices, you can go to the Apple Store, um, search NDSU Pest Management, uh, and download it through there. Um, note that you will need a, an Apple ID and a password. Uh, similarly, for the Droid-based devices, you, you can go to the Google Play Store and type in NDSU Pest Management app and download it from there. Uh, so once you have downloaded and opened the app, um, you can get to the main screen. Uh, what I'm showing you here is uh, what you'll see often on a tablet version, uh, so like your iPad or Nexus uh, being two tablet devices. And it will differ slightly with any kind of phone. Uh, on the phones, you won't have any of these bookmark devices uh, on the main page. Uh, rather, you will have to slide your screen or click on the toolbar in the upper left hand corner to have access to these additional tools and bookmark section. So to start things off, um, the app is divided into search by a main crop. So here uh, for practical purposes today, uh, we're going to uh, click on driving. Note we can choose any one of the seven crops that are listed. Uh, after selecting a crop, uh, it'll then bring the three pest types that you can look to manage, uh, diseases, insects, and weeds. Um, so in this case, I'm going to click on, say, if we have a diseases of driving that we're looking for some more information about. Um, once you click on diseases, you'll notice uh, another another table that shows us the general info resources in a uh, selection of diseases. So starting from the top and moving down, uh, the general info tab is what would uh, you commonly see in the hard copy versions of the uh, plant disease management guide in the front half. Um, this would be similar to what you would see with the other uh, pest control guides as well. Um, once you click on it, as you can see that there is a a uh, variety of uh, information that you want to look at or perhaps that you want to find more information on. So I'm going to click back here and then look at the resource tab. Here are the resources. Uh, we have the end on uh, link or site that we can look at, extension, in this case plant pathology, the Department of Ag, uh, pesticide training and certification. Uh, so as you click on one of the resources, it will be hyperlinked and if you are connected to a wireless device or you can use uh, your, uh, your other uh, data available, you can uh, visit the websites uh, that way. So that kind of gives you a uh, sense of what to look at once you have selected a pest. Now let's go into what happens when you select on a disease. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to click on dry bean rust. And uh, with driving rust, you have a full year application option. Uh, so we'll select that. And now we have the list of fungicides uh, that are labeled uh, for driving rust uh, in North Dakota here. Um, if sometimes you'll have to make decisions based on what is available to you, or uh, in this case, maybe you're just looking for more information. Uh, I'm going to click on Monsoon, uh, which is a tebiconazole based product. So after you click on uh, the fungicide trade name, you'll be brought to another screen. Uh, note that both the insects, uh, the diseases, and the weeds are all going to have a similar information base for the uh, control version. 
So here we have the trade name located on top, followed by the active ingredient. In this case, it's tibiconazole. Um, for this, this is the FRAC group. Uh, this is the FRAC3 demethylation inhibitors, also known as the triazoles. Here we have a dose rate of uh, fluid ounces per acre. Um, target organism is the rust pathogen. Uh, you can use it as a spray of fundigation and any other type of remarks regarding that specific chemical will be located at the bottom. Um, note this, uh, it says review your label for more information, which is always a good decision to do. Uh, there is one note that do not apply more than 12 fluid ounces per year. So that is uh, kind of the basic way how you would visit through a specific pest or um, looking for more fungicide information in this case, uh, but regardless, it is the same method. Now to go back to the main screen, uh, you can just keep on hitting the arrow in the upper left hand corner. That will keep taking you back to the previous page like so. Or if you, if you look at the toolbar in the, in the left hand corner where you have everything else inserted, you can click that and it will bring you right back to the home page. So there are other features that are also included with this app, um, and one is the tool selection here. So for an iPhone, you would have to move the screen over to select it. For tablet users, uh, you can select it as, as follows. And here we have more tools for uh, herbicide type of applications. Um, uh, first of all, with crop rotation restrictions, uh, how this is set up is you can select the herbicide of choice uh, that you're looking at. Uh, as far as what type of rotation restrictions you're looking at uh, when applying this fungicide. Uh, so we'll just stick with Accent. And in the bottom here, you'll notice uh, there's a variety of crops that are represented in the weed control guide. Uh, so in this case, I click Barley, so there's no bioassay information. But notice if I would switch that to, uh, let's say, Beyond. Um, notice a rotation restriction or any other type of information that would pop up. So it is fluid, so anytime you choose a new herbicide, it will come back with a new rotation restriction. Uh, another feature in the tool section is the relative herbicide effectiveness. Uh, you can think of this as an efficacy table, and this is in regards uh, strictly to uh, the herbicides. Uh, note that we do not have one for the insect or diseases yet. Uh, but in this case, uh, we select a herbicide just like before. Uh, we'll leave it on 2,4-D here. And you can see the information with the weeds uh, as follows. Uh, for this case, E uh, refers to excellent control. Uh, G is for good control. F is fair. P is poor. And N means there's no control. So it does give you a, a good quick reference in as far as if, if a herbicide is going to be effective on a weed species. Uh, the final aspect of the toolbar uh, that we should be familiar with is the minimum rain intervals. Um, this is a period of time between uh, a herbicide application and a rainfall event. Uh, in this case, um, you know, it does, it, moving left to right here, it will give the herbicide trade name and the minimum rain interval on the right hand side. So it does have a variety of, uh, of other additional tools other than just disease management. One other feature I'd like to showcase is this bookmark section, and this is really to highlight important pages. Uh, so say that you solely are a small grain producer, and your biggest issue are diseases. Um, instead of going through the step-by-step -step process, uh, we can bookmark this page. So in this case, um, now you'll click bookmark, and then you can enter anything that you would see fit. You could put small grain diseases, uh, it could be fungicide info for wheat, uh, whatever it has to be. Uh, once you have clicked OK, uh, now that if uh, you ever need to have a quick reference, uh, we can click on that bookmark and it will bring us right to the page that we uh, had selected previously. So that's another feature that you can uh, look at and play around with and uh, uh, r really try to take full advantage of what all the app has to follow. Uh, Thank you for your time, and if you have any additional questions, uh, feel free to contact me uh, uh, through my email, andrew.j.friscup at ndsu.edu, and thank you for your time.
Hello, this is Andrew Friskup. I am the North Dakota State University Serial Extension Plant Pathologist, and today I am going to show you an example of how to use the NASU Pest Management app. Uh, in this case, I'm going to say I'm a corn farmer in North Dakota and have an issue with common cockaber. Uh, so using the pest management app, the way I would get to information for common cockaber control in corn would be select the host crop, corn, select the pest, in this case it's a weed, and then look at common cockaber itself. Uh, however, if I'm not quite sure if it is common cockaber, notice you can click on the picture and it gives you a cotyledon uh, type of picture. Notice use this as a tool, uh, it's just more of a supplemental resource. So once I'm positive it's common cockaber, I'm looking at the type of application I want to make. Well, in this case I want to make a post application, a post emergent application. Um, Notice I have a variety of options that I can use for this, uh, but for this case, I'm going to say I'm going to use Banville or uh, Dicamba on this. Um, note I have the active ingredient, uh, the type of mode of action uh, that it may have. Note in this one, the specific site is unknown. Uh, the target weed is any broadleaf weeds, when to apply, and any other remarks that can go through with this. So following these information, uh, you can give you a relatively good idea of how well Banville would work on common cockaber. Um, for any kind of other general info, perhaps you want to look at an adjuvant or any other supplemental information, uh, we can always go through that way too into any other further information. So I hope you enjoyed this quick video on how to use this pest management app when you have a weed control problem in your field. Hello, my name is Andrew Friskup and I am the NDSU Serial Extension Plant Pathologist. Uh, today I'm going to show you another example of how to use the NDSU Pest Management app uh, when you have an insect problem in your soybean fields. So once you have successfully launched the pest management app, now we can go through defining information for soybean aphids. So the first thing I'm going to select is the host crop, in this case soybean, and then I'm going to select the pest of choice. In this case, it's an insect. Um, and also there are a variety of insects that can cause damage on soybeans, but the one I'm specifically worried about is the soybean aphid. Uh, we'll click on the photo. Uh, in this case, it's an adult version of it, uh, looking specifically at these black cornicles. Uh, once I'm positive I have a soybean aphid problem, I can then select treatment options. So I'm looking for a foliar application of an insecticide to help with the soybean aphid pressure. So once after I collect my option, I can look at the number of insecticides that are labeled for soybean aphid control. Uh, in this case, I've um, decided to use Warrior. Um, you can notice the, as similar as the other videos, you have the active ingredient, uh, the mode of action, in this case it's a sodium channel modulator, uh, the, the rate the rate suggested to use, post-harvest interval uh, restrictions, and anything else that may or may not be uh, used for. If I need in more information or like to know more either about this product or insecticide applications in general, I could take select the general information and could start to find additional information on soybean aphid. Here we're looking at pest pressures, economic thresholds, and scouting. So there is a lot of information available at your fingertips when it comes to managing pests by uh, simply using the NDC Pest Management app. Thank you for watching this video today, and if you have any further questions, please contact me. Hello, my name is Andrew Friska, and I am the NDSU Serial Extension Plant Pathologist. Today I want to share with you a video of how to use the NDSU Pest Management app if you are a grower. Uh, so in this case, once you have successfully launched and loaded the video, uh, I'm going to say I am a wheat farmer that is dealing with rust issues in my crop. So in this case, I'm going to want to move through, I'm a small grains grower, um, and then select the pest that I am worried about this year. In this case, it's a disease. Uh, once it brings me to the next uh, table, I notice there are a variety of diseases that can uh, affect my wheat crop, but I'm really worried about is rust. In this case, we'll, see, we'll say leaf rust. 
Um, we could take a picture, uh, look at for visual examination. Notice we have two rust diseases in this one, uh, the leaf rust here and the stripe rust located down here. So once we have made a positive diagnosis of what disease is in the field, we can look at some options. So I'm looking to make a foliar application of a fungicide to help reduce the amount of rust pressure in my field. Notice after clicking the foliar application tab, I have a variety of fungicides that are labeled for uh, rust management in North Dakota. Uh, in this case, uh, today I will choose Quilt, uh, which is a combination of frac groups. And as you may have seen earlier, uh, we brings us to the what I call the management tab. And here it has the trade name Quilt with the active ingredients as oxystrobin and propiconazole, uh, re representing two frac groups, demethylation inhibitors and quinone outside inhibitors. Uh, we have use rates on acres, uh, other diseases that is known to suppress, and any other additional information such as post-harvest intervals or the maximum amount of quilt that can be applied to a wheat crop. If we're looking for more information, uh, perhaps anything on uh, fungicide resistant management strategies, so forth, we do have supplement information in the general info tab. So thank you for watching this video, and if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. Thank you.